What's going on everyone? Tyler Edwards here with another video and uh, today we're going to talk about the Port Keys BM5 monitor. Now full disclosure, they did send this to me to review. However, I'm not getting paid by them to review it or say anything good or anything like that. So uh, this is just going to be my open and honest opinion about this monitor. There's some good things to say about it and not so good things to say about it. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. Before we get into the things I like and don't like and a couple wish list items, uh, let's just kind of give a general overview of the monitor. It is a 5.2 inch a touch screen monitor that is full HD and kind of the big selling point is it's 2200 nits of brightness and it is a very bright monitor uh, daylight viewable uh, without a doubt even in the bright sunny days of Charleston South Carolina no problem seeing it out in daylight uh, I also did get the Bluetooth module from them as well which uh, basically connects from uh, the bottom of this uh, module to the monitor up here and that allows you to uh, control maybe your camera, like the uh, Blackmagic Pocket 4K, for example, uh, from the touchscreen monitor, which is pretty stinking awesome. It has uh, two SDI ports, uh, and then it also comes with a uh, so SDI in and out. And it comes with this Limo uh, power connection uh, cable too, as well, so you can power it off DTAP, uh, which is awesome if you have like a V-mount setup like this. However, it also is able to be powered through a Sony L-series battery like your 970s and all that kind of stuff. So pretty awesome there. And on the top, we have uh, four customizable function buttons. You can kind of map those to whatever you want. And uh, depending on the camera that I have uh, using it with, either my C200 or my Pocket 4K, I have these mapped to different functions. Um, so pretty awesome there. And then there's this little menu scroll wheel that can, uh, if, you're, if you're not in a menu system, it, it controls the volume uh, of the uh, headphone jack. Uh, but if you push it in, then you can obviously get to the menu system and navigate through the menu system that way. On off switch here, headphone jack, and then HDMI in, uh, for those of you that don't have cameras with SDI. Then on the bottom, you have a USB port, which is, uh, allows you to basically uh, upload uh, firmware updates and then also upload uh, custom 3D LUTs, which you can store onto the monitor itself, which is pretty awesome. And then this camera remote to control cameras uh, via a wired connection like I do with my Canon C200. And then you have a quarter 20 thread on the bottom as well as on the top for mounting. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it um, as far as physical features. I guess the one other thing I'll talk about is just the, the actual build quality of this thing. I think this thing is made from an aluminum alloy material or something because it's extremely robust. The whole thing's metal. Because of the material they used, it is very lightweight, which is really awesome. And if you power it through this uh, DTAP cable, then it's an extremely uh, lightweight setup, which just kind of cuts cuts weight on your overall rig, especially going handheld. It's kind of nice to uh, cut a few ounces where you can. So that being said, let's just kind of jump into a couple things that I like, and then we'll jump into a couple things that I don't like. The first thing that I really like is just the overall build quality of this monitor. It just feels very robust in the hands. It just feels like something that I have no problem throwing in my bag, bringing it out in the field, knowing that it will uh, last kind of like my small HD 501. It's just, it feels kind of like the same build quality as that. The other thing I like is having LUT support on there. And the reason why I like it being able to to load custom LUTs on it is because for, uh, for my Canon C200, you're not actually able to load uh, custom 3D LUTs to the camera to, to monitor uh, while you know while you're shooting. I grade with on my C200. I grade with my C200 LUTs that I made for the camera. Um, so I, I want to be able to monitor with those LUTs as well, just because uh, it, it's it's great to be able to monitor with the LUTs that you're going to end up grading with. Um, so I love the fact that this has that ability in here. The next thing is the, the actual monitoring features, uh, like exposure tools and all that kind of stuff. And it has all the scopes that you would want as you got, well, first of all, you got false color, which is my favorite uh, exposure tool, but you also get all the other things like uh, a histogram, you get uh, RGB parades, you get a waveform. Uh, and then you also get a vector scope, which is pretty cool. And uh, that's really awesome for, you know, making sure that your colors are accurate and that your skin tones are on point and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, the next thing I really like is how bright this monitor is. Uh, that's kind of the biggest selling point of this monitor, in my opinion, uh, apart from the camera control, which we'll get into in a second. And yeah, I just love how bright this monitor is. It's, it's I, you don't have to have a sun hood or anything like that. It's just that bright to be able to see out in bright daylight. And with the brightness, uh, you can actually change the uh, fan speed, which is, uh, which is nice because at, at the high brightness, you wanna kind of have the fan speed at high, just to kind of keep 
thing's cool. However, it's pretty audible and I would only use that outdoors. So you can actually tame that fan noise down a little bit, bring it down to low, especially when the backlight on the monitor is set to low as well. Like if you're indoors or something. So the other thing I really like about this monitor are the custom user pages uh, that you can uh, set up in the, the menu system. And these are really cool because I, I kind of set these user pages up for different camera systems and different shooting situations. So like I got my user one setting uh, just for the Canon C200. And what that allows me to do is I have these function buttons custom mapped to uh, the settings that I would use for the Canon C200. So I have camera control, focus peaking, false color, and uh, the LUT to toggle the LUT on and off. Uh, pretty awesome there, but uh, on the user setting two, I had it set up for the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Since I don't use the false color on the monitor or the focus peaking, I use those from the camera. Uh, I have different custom functions set up, so I have the function one set up to uh, camera control, obviously. Uh, function two, I have the set up to be able to quickly change the, the backlight display. Function three, I have set up to crosshairs, so just to get like a center crosshair uh, for you know, whatever uh, reason if I needed to completely center the framing. And then function four, I have set up to have the waveform and all that kind of stuff. And then the last thing is uh, the camera control. Now with the Canon C200, using the wired connection uh, into the remote port by the HDMI port. Uh, you can control all the menu systems and everything from the touchscreen of this monitor, which really kind of negates the need to even have the, uh, the monitor that comes with the Canon C200 itself. The only thing that you lose really is being able to uh, set your focus point, your, you know, your dual pixel autofocus point with the touchscreen, um, you know, just like you can on the uh, C200 monitor. But other than that, you pretty much have everything that you need there. You can navigate through the menus and all that kind of stuff uh, through this monitor. So um, yeah, it's pretty stinking awesome uh, to have that functionality built into this monitor. Um, you can trigger record, all that kind of stuff uh, just from this monitor. And then if you have the Bluetooth module, Obviously, this kind of opens up a whole new uh, plethora of creative options uh, when shooting because you can control uh, your camera, depending on your camera model, you can control it with this Bluetooth module uh, wirelessly because it is using Bluetooth. You can control it completely uh, independent of it being on the camera. So if you have a system like a Teradek or this Hollyland uh, you know, Mars 400 system, uh, you could monitor and everything and trigger record all that kind of stuff uh, without it actually uh, touching the camera. Just being able to control it via Bluetooth is just a, a really awesome feature to have. It just kind of opens up more creative possibilities. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the last thing I really like about this uh, monitor. Now, there are other things that I do like about it, but those are kind of my main uh, selling points, I guess, of, of this monitor. Someone were to ask me, that's kind of what I would tell them that I really like about it. So moving on to a few things that uh, I don't like and good news is I think all of these things can be fixed via firmware. In fact, I've contacted port keys about this um, and, and they are uh, supposedly working on it. However, they don't have really uh, an estimated time of completion at this time. But um, yeah, the first thing is uh, not really all the functions work. Uh, and uh, for example, the off speed record button to toggle on, off speed record on and off, it doesn't actually work if, uh, if, if you press it in, nothing happens. And then if you press the toggle button again, uh, it just defaults back to true 24P, even if you were in 23.98. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer there. As far as I understand, these issues are only um, localized to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. They all seem to be working on the Pocket 6K, which is good. And they told me that they tested all this functionality with the Pocket 6K. So um, hopefully they can get this addressed pretty quickly because uh, otherwise uh, these issues really make this monitor not very functional with the Pocket 4K. The other th issue that I have with this monitor is uh, with regards to the Bluetooth module again, and it doesn't support 23.98 in the sense that if you're going through the project frame rates to change the whatever, it it defaults to 24p and 30p like you can't get 29.97 and 23.98 for some reason and i'm not sure it's just a communication issue i think again it works on the 6k just fine just on the pocket 4k 
it doesn't actually let you select 23.98 and 29.97. So um, kind of a bummer there. Uh, hopefully that can be fixed uh, via firmware. And those are the two really the only things that I uh, kind of have an issue with this monitor so far. Um, and I've, I've, I've been using it for a few weeks now, testing it in outdoors and all that kind of stuff. And that's really, those are really the only complaints that I have with this monitor so far. But I do have a few wish list items that um, maybe could be updated via firmware. I'm not really sure just with regards to the uh, Bluetooth protocol. But the first thing that I wish that they could update via Bluetooth is to be able to toggle the three function buttons that um, you have on the Pocket 4K. And again, when it's connected to the camera, like it's on a top handle, I mean, it's not that big of a deal to, you know, toggle it on the camera. However, uh, if you're using a wireless system, again, like I said, and, and this monitor is connected to a Teradek or something and you're monitoring it completely wirelessly, it would be really awesome to toggle these functions uh, on the camera. So for example, I have the uh, F1 button to false color. And although this has false color on this monitor, I just prefer the false color on this camera because the false color on this camera is calibrated to this sensor into this camera. Uh, so I just prefer the, to use the false color on the camera. And then I have the function two button to focus peaking. And although this monitor has focus peaking as well, I much prefer the focus peaking in camera because when you use focus peaking on the monitor, not only is like whatever you have actually in focus uh, have focus peaking around it, but all the text that gets displayed over the HDMI. So I send like the uh, pretty much what you see on the Pocket 4K screen, I send it over HDMI. All that has uh, whatever color line of focus peaking that you have around it. And that just really annoys me. So I prefer to just use the focus peaking and send it over HDMI on the Pocket 4K. And then a uh, clean feed, I have that just for like playback and all that kind of stuff or, or whatever the case may be. I just wish there was a way on, on one of the menu items to just toggle you know f1 f2 f3 here uh that'd be pretty cool there and then more so uh, again it'd be really cool to be able to uh, access the, the playback functionality just through this monitor just to you know negate the need to actually access the monitor here because that helps out with rigging options or again if you are in a situation where you can't access the camera easily but you want to play back to make sure everything looks good It'd be really awesome to be able to do that from this monitor. And then the last thing uh, with regards to like the Bluetooth functionality that I would really like to see is to be able to access the custom presets menu on the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K. I'm not talking about like the toggling presets that you can on the, the, the function buttons here. I'm talking the, the actual preset menu where you can save things like, you know, frame rate and resolution and audio settings and all that kind of stuff all at once. And, and white balance and all everything you know that you want to save in a custom preset. I wish you could actually access access that through this menu uh, for this monitor just as, as another page to just access those. That'd be really cool. Again, I'm not even sure if that's a, you know, possible through the Bluetooth protocol, but it would be pretty awesome to be able to access that, and and that would pretty much make it uh, almost usable to to almost use this completely independent of needing to use the camera. Um, and then I guess one more thing, I, I, I guess really I wish like you could just access all the pages from the Pocket 4K on this monitor. Again, I don't even know if that's possible through the Bluetooth protocol, but it'd just be really cool uh, to be able to do that. And then my last wish list item for this would be uh, with regards to this scroll wheel here. As it currently stands, you can only use this to control the volume uh, of the headphone jack. And to me, I will never use the headphone jack to monitor audio. Um, I'm always gonna monitor audio at the source if I can. Um, so with with that being said, like just just to avoid any latency issues or anything like that, I'm not gonna monitor it through the uh, actual monitor. I'm gonna have my headphones in the camera. So this scroll wheel to change the volume really doesn't help me at all. It doesn't help me uh, in my workflow or while I'm shooting. I wish you could change this to change the the backlight brightness because I feel like I would use that much more often than uh, actually the change in the volume on the scroll wheel. Well, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to really say about this monitor. If you have this monitor or thinking about getting this monitor, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what your experiences are or kind of what your hesitations are of getting this monitor. If you found this useful, helpful, or anything like that, definitely give it a thumbs up. Consider hitting subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you're still here and you want to leave a comment but um, don't really have anything else to add to this conversation, then answer this question. If you drink coffee, what is your favorite way of brewing said coffee? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.